Our next guest is a filmmaker, producer, and an Academy Award nominated screenwriter. Please welcome to the studio, Roman Coppola. Thank you so Thank much you. for joining us, sir. It's my pleasure. Uh, how does it feel to be live in person with people after two years? It's thrilling. It's, uh, I've been secluded, as we all have been, and to get out and mix around and to be in a new city walking around is, is a pleasure. With a crew, right? Yeah. I mean, you miss this. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for being our third my guest pleasure. today. And you actually are here to talk about not only filmmaking, mm -hmm. but also blockchain. Now, I'm an old man. Explain mm -hmm. to me, if I'm an eight-year-old child, right. Blockchain. Don't don't ask me that question okay. because it's tricky. But I'll I'll do my well, best. Okay. How about yeah. this? Okay. How how does how can you use blockchain to finance films? Well, that's what we're trying to do. And um, uh, you know, something that's interesting to me is that technology and filmmaking have been hand in hand since right. the beginning of time, uh, since the beginning of cinema. And in fact, my great grandfather built the machine that allowed for sync sound to happen on the jazz singer. So he oh, was wow. a machinist. Yeah. So anyway, throughout the years, and especially my dad, there's been a big interest in how technology can be a, in service to, to, to filmmaking, and to cinema. And uh, in his work, he did innovation with sound and using digital tools, editorial, all that stuff, which we're seeing here kind of as you do your work. With regards to blockchain, um, it is comp complex, and I don't f understand it in the deepest sense, but basically we are creating a decentralized platform. That means that everyone is sharing the responsibility. It's immutable. It's transparent. There's no ability to game the system to create a, a platform and a community that will allow works that have merit to rise up and be voted on and be, uh, you know, sort of curated by the participants, the, the, the crowd. So uh, in, in the world of movies, there are a lot of barriers, agents, studio heads, that basically control things. Gatekeepers, right? Gatekeepers. And money. And, and it's coming down to controlling the money. And this is a, a method to have uh, people, a very low barrier for entry, you don't have to pay anything, you engage with our, our platform and you can bring your, your life to work, or, you know, br bring your work out to, to, get, uh, to see it rise up and get potential. So what's the difference between blockchain financing and say like crowdsourcing? Well, we don't really, we're not really, um, providing the money, we, what we do is we use tokens. So if I have a project, I put stake some tokens to have it evaluated, and all the participants gain a, a bit of that token for their effort to review it. Mm. So we don't actually um, finance a movie uh, uh, with, with the, these tokens. However, we give prizes and incentives, and one of our big exciting uh, things I think I can share is that Please. Steven Soderbergh is who's epitomizes sort of the top of the top uh, of independent filmmaker. He's had the most incredible diverse career, super talented. He's actually um, putting forth a prize for a few hundred thousand dollars. Oh wow! To uh, to st stimulate, uh, you know, to kind of get our uh, platform um, out there, and because he he supports us, and so that will be a fund for a filmmaker to to vie for. So they're going to put forth their entries and everyone can participate way in, and then Soderbergh will be the sort of ultimate uh, judge of, of w which is the one that he feels has the merit and will get that prize. So there's a lot of uh, prizes and incentives, and because we're a um, 501c3 charitable organization, uh, people, like there's a thing called the Gotham, which is a documentary resource that people are putting forth these kind of incentives and prizes to uh, draw people in and to, to give them a reward. Oh, so you heard here, Steve Soderbergh is actually yeah. behind this. He's going to give several hundred thousand dollars. In fairness to him, he, he's he's a, uh, obviously a friend and a, uh, a partner in a way, but he's not really part of our company. He just is an outside person who's. But like, he's, hey, he's supporting this. He's That's, supporting and, this, and yeah. to have his validation, but not just his validation, yeah. but also his money behind this yeah, for a young filmmaker is incredible. Huge. It, you know, you, you've touched upon this, and I want to decentralize pictures, which you have started, mm -hmm. uh, pretty much to house this, right? And I mm -hmm. saw this this trailer you guys made that mm -hmm. explains right. to a layman like me the, the, the steps. Right. So if you can, mm -hmm. suppose there's someone watching right now, like, all right, I, I'm a filmmaker. Mm -hmm. What are the steps? Well, you sign in. You know, initially we're starting small. Uh, we actually had a trial, sort of beta test, where we had uh, some finishing funds for a, a, a film that had already been shot. And so we, those who had a film, put it, present it into the system. You load the material. You write a little paragraph. You you go to decentralized pictures. Exactly, decentralized pictures. You uh, put the materials forth that 
uh, say why you are deserving of this prize and do a little explainer mm -hmm. or uh, interview, and then people vote and it rises up. So that's sort of the, the fundamentals of how it works. So there might be a prize, say the Soderbergh thing, uh, you would go, you'd log in, you make an account, and you would, um, you know, put forth your proposal, your pitch. There'll be sort of a call to action. So there may be a, a treatment that's required, but you could do an interview, you can put images. So uh, some filmmaker that has some extraordinary life story, they can sort of, yeah. you know, express what it is to, to get that attention to sort of vie for this prize. And then the people, the, all the participants vote on which one they feel is the most stimulating and you know should be rewarded uh, how many how big can you share how big is your community right now you know I can't say because I don't know it's just beginning uh, we I can say that we have um, reached out and have a affiliation with basically every film school that exists in the awesome. country okay so all the students uh, are uh, you know kind of we have a relationship with the schools to, to populate with those folks uh, on the other end of the spectrum all the big agencies and the managers and the distribution companies are also our partners in that uh, we're basically saying we're going to find some great material would you like to see it and so CAA or whoever it may be top all level, the talent they, agencies they they yeah. want to like yeah bring it so yeah. they're standing by to see what we bring forth but at this moment it's just it's just beginning and so this chat we're having is you know the goal is like hey yeah. go check it out sign up sign in and the Soderbergh a pr project will be sort of this wonderful kickoff to bring a lot of attention and participation. So you have your backing, you're a big name, you've had a storied mm -hmm. career, you got Steve Stoderberg. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming you're gonna lean on family, maybe Sofia Coppola is gonna get involved. She is involved in that, you know, she supports the things I do as I support the things she does and she's on our board of advisors. And okay, already she, a win. Yeah, so <laughs> she's, you know, she's very passionate about uh, female, subject matter female filmmakers and she's been a pioneer in that area and so that's kind of one of her passions so uh, you know we're talking about how she can use her uh, clout to support that type of thing do you think do you think that the type of clout that you have for this mm -hmm. right is is, is going to give you an edge because the track record so far right mm -hmm. uh, these these things haven't really succeeded yet so mm -hmm. what what's giving you the confidence that now this is the entryway decentralized pictures you can actually pull it off well one thought that comes to mind as you ask is that we've been working on this for about four and a half years or so. Wow. And you know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, kind of frothy excitement about, especially about NFTs and blockchain is kind of a buzzword and Bitcoin. Um, but we're proud, I'm proud that this is something that we identified a group of years ago, slowly built, built our platform, uh, built our network of support. And so I feel that that slow and steady, a foundational focus uh, is, uh, has a lot of merit. And you know, it's connected with my family's film company, American Zoetrope is kind of affiliated with it and that's something my dad founded in the 60s with his group of colleagues. Uh, Based in my hometown, the Bay, I just have to say. Yeah, that. Well, well, good, we're both from, hey, kids. from the Bay, we love that. Um, and so that sense of community and young people trying to make change. He and also experimental. Experimental, uh, recognizing cinema as a vital art form, that it needs to be shared, it can't just be controlled by some corporations, we can't just have the same movie made yeah. over and over. So there's a lot of compelling reasons that I'm excited about it. And um, and it comes from those roots, you know, that uh, it's a group of people coming together, commenting on each other's work, much as it was when my dad was a young man, going to a cafe in North Beach and talking about scripts with his colleagues, it happened to be George Lucas, and other noteworthy people. I mean, you, the roots are experimental, and, and and you mentioned the roots that you have in your family, right, with Francis Ford Coppola, your father, and uh, 50th anniversary of Godfather. So mm -hmm. people might say, oh, Francis Ford Coppola worked with Paramount and worked with the big studios, mm -hmm. and people forget that he mm -hmm. actually had the experimental art house roots. Very and much. then he brought that to Godfather, which now we say, oh, it's mainstream cinema, but right. the pushback that he got at that time was extreme. Uh, Godfather's my favorite movie. Mm -hmm kind of a nerd about it, mm -hmm. so I get it. But yeah. but it's the same roots that now you're bringing with technology. And another buzzword that you haven't used yet is crypto. And mm -hmm. you guys have your own cryptocurrency at Decentralized Pictures, right? Yeah, we don't really call it a currency. Uh, it's a token, so it is a, 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 you know, it's just another word for it. But it basically sort of powers the system. It's the, the method of exchange. So if you have a project, you need to have some tokens to 
uh, put forth and then so that sort of pays for other people to review it. So it kind of is the mechanics behind um, how this thing operates, but it's not really a, a currency in that, like it's not like we're gonna use that money to fund uh, movies right off the bat. Ultimately, because we're a 501c3, there'll be a pot of potential value that we could dip into to support films, and it will be never, it, any profits that come in will go right back into it because it's locked in as a charitable organization. Yeah. So it's kind of exciting that um, as if the thing, this takes off and it grows, that there'll be a fund of money that can be perpetually be tapped in to support uh, new voices and, uh, you know, a new generation of filmmakers. The token is called Film Credits, capital F-I-L-M, yep. capital C, credits, film yep. credits. And I should mention, not to jump in, but no, please. because we're sort of at a tech conference, that our token is a standalone sort of entity that's not governed by us. It's kind of part of this community that's, uh, you know, decentralized. So all the people that set up the nodes are, uh, you know, sharing the control of it. So there's the aspiration that, you know, there are many different tokens out there but we uh, want to, to be the token for uh, cinema arts, for, for art in general, for creativity, because there's different tokens that represent different kind of niches of yeah. endeavor. That's your identity. And so that's our identity, is, is we're a film credit, uh, and it, we can be used to sort of power other systems, and in the future, you know, whether it's casting, or whether it's uh, you know, f being equitable for paying crew, and all these other endeavors that relate to film, this token could be a part of that uh, method, you know, sort of a currency for that. You know, in the industry, of, well, in any, any and every industry, mm -hmm. there is a, oftentimes lack of diversity, oftentimes there's the gatekeepers, mm -hmm. there's nepotism, wealth, uh, white men oftentimes, mm -hmm. right, and uh, get the top plum rolls and mm -hmm. it just gets passed down, passed mm -hmm. down. Have you seen so far, I mean, it's still nascent, mm -hmm. that this type of decentralization is actually helping a diversity of voices get out there in front? I want to say, I have, um, but we just haven't really, we haven't released it yet, so yeah. we're about to announce it. Um, we did um, sponsor the finishing funds for a film that was uh, only, uh, we only invited uh, USC uh, uh, alumni to participate because it was sort of a beta tester, and um, so it wasn't a huge group of people, but a, a bunch of people put forth their work, and the film that was selected through the, the our system was made by a young woman, Asian, uh, it's a wonderful movie, and so I can't. Can you, can you name the movie right now? Or? Uh, it's called Poachers, it's a short film, yeah. and her name is Tiffany, I, I, I don't recall her last name. Poachers. Poachers, it's a, it's a wonderful short film I saw, uh, uh, I haven't seen the final, final finished version, but uh, it was, I was proud, like wow, this is a neat movie, and we can't take total credit because she had initiated on her own, and we just helped but it, finish it. But it got it. the funding. It got the funding, and it allowed her to, to do more, and she'll be at, She's here at South by, so oh, great. she'll be speaking about it. But um, anyway, I don't want to take too much credit, but it's just it's take the a little beginning. bit of credit. Take a little, a little bit. bit. It's the beginning. Yeah. Uh, d uh, for you, for your future projects, do you see yourself using this system to help finance your endeavors? Ultimately, uh, I do. In that, uh, as it grows and there's more uh, people and more uh, uh, potential, uh, then I could see using it. But it, it's really. You know, quite geared for uh, new voices. You know, yeah. and so um, it's not uh, something. Are you? Yeah, you feel like you're at the grandfather stage of your career. Well, <laughs> you know, it's funny because I always felt like I've been a kid, and I was always the kid around the set. You right. know, being an assistant, helping out, and now I've had uh, you know a career for some time, and so uh, it actually relates to something that's of interest to me that relates to this, which is in art. There's a, a tradition of a master apprentice. You know, like. If you're Leonardo da Vinci, you have studio assistants, and they clean your brushes, and they get your coffee, and uh, you know maybe do a little something, paint a little background of a cloud, and it's a, a wonderful tradition in filmmaking because yeah. that kind of uh, relationship of someone who's very experienced helping a up and comer, and the up and comer inspires the older voice like, oh wow, I didn't know about that, or tell me. So it's it's not a one way exchange. It's a relationship. It's a relationship, it, and it's pays back uh, both ways. In fact, my dad recently, he's preparing a film and he had all these young high school students come to do a rehearsal session with him and he was so stimulated, like, wow, these young guys had all these ideas and, and then of course the kids were inspired to work with him. So that exchange of, you know, apprentice, uh, master is kind of 
rooted into this, and someone like Soderbergh, someone like myself, someone like my sister, that we're kind of you know supporting it and sponsoring it, and we'll sort of guide things as we can uh, in terms of you know putting prizes out there and encouraging people. Yeah. It, it, there's a lot of that and intention, and also we ultimately plan to have you know AMAs and speaking guests and uh, you know to build a. But it's building. It's, it's yeah. the root. You're, you're putting yeah. down the roots. You know, speaking about relationships, mm -hmm. uh, you said your father. You know, ha mm -hmm. he, he have friends. A renaissance happens with a group of friends mm -hmm. who come together oftentimes united by a certain passion, right? Yeah. So he had Lucas and others. Mm -hmm. You've had a fruitful career with Wes Anderson mm -hmm. and, and many others. Mm -hmm. I have to ask this question. Out of all of Wes Anderson's movies, just mm -hmm. us right now, don't, mm -hmm. no one's watching, which mm -hmm. one's your favorite? Well, it's hard to pick a favorite. I have different favorites. You know, Moonrise Kingdom. Uh, which you co-wrote. Which yeah. I co-wrote. And, and you got the Academy Award nomination. So that was... Excellent movie. Thank you. And that was very personal, you know, related to things that... that meant something to me. Uh, Darjeeling Limited was the film, my first kind of writing association with Wes, and that's also about three friends or three brothers on an adventure, and that's sort of a reflection of what the experience we had. So that's very close to my heart. So I love them all, but you know, those those two. Mind. What's the one you like eh, mm. to do without? Well, you know, Grand Hotel Budapest. I didn't work on that. No, I love that movie. I didn't. I I I was. I helped. My name was not on it. No, I wasn't on the writing team, but I was on the the crew uh, helping with some photography. So yeah. I love them all. Uh, final 30 seconds. What project uh, are you working on right now that you're most excited about? Well, I'm actually, aside from this, because I'm super excited about DCP, I have another uh, sort of um, uh, communication app that I'm working on, working in film. You're dealing with a lot of people. Mm. I'm very dissatisfied with emails and uh, text. It's, I find it really... Uh, incompatible with me, and I'm sort of always distracted. So I have a new platform that I, I call Casboo, and in fact, if you go to casboo.net, uh, I'm sort of seeking a sort of first cohort of people to, to to do a test run. It's not we're not releasing it quite yet, but casboo.net. Check it out if you if someone is if someone's dissatisfied with communication as it stands and wants to experiment with a totally brand new platform. It's not like any other uh, text or messenger or Facebook chat is a totally different thing. So, and also you're here for decentralized pictures, Very filmmakers. Much. If you're interested, go check it out. Yes. Go submit. It's starting up. You got Steve Soderbergh, who's got his money behind it and his name behind it. Thank you so much, Roman, for joining us My today. Pleasure. Thank you for the Thank support. Thank you all for watching. You can watch all of our studio interviews on the South by Southwest TV app, available on Apple TV, Roku, Android TV, and Amazon Fire. These interviews are also available on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash SXSW. And for a complete list of our interview schedule, check out SXSW.com forward slash studio. I am Ajat Ali, and we will be back later today from the South by Southwest studio. Thank you.